Hello everyone, uh, this is Queen Kay, and today I have the wonderful pleasure of um, interviewing this beautiful young lady uh, by the name of um, Ifonanya Wanori. Oh, I messed up. Wanonyiri. <laughs> I got it, right? Yes, and yes. Um, she is uh, an educator and has passion in teaching the Igbo language. So uh, can you introduce yourself a little bit to us and what do you do and how did you come about becoming um, what you're doing? Tell yes. us. <laughs> <laughs> so as you said, my name is Ifnaya Wanoyeri. Um, I'm based in um, New Jersey and I am by profession a doctor of physical therapy and I'm practicing um, on the side. I'm also running like this organization or platform that's geared towards um, teaching people how to speak the Igbo language, as well as just building deeper connections um, from the diaspora to people and individuals back home. Mm -hmm. um, so it's been like a bit of a passion project since I was in graduate school till now that I'm working. I so, love it. Yeah. And just like many parents and many uh, young Igbo Nigerians, we come here, we we do we we maybe some of us know how to speak the language but when we have kids something happens that makes us not pass it on it to them and pass it on and it wasn't intentional I don't think it was because I wasn't proud of my um culture or language I just think it just what it was what it was actually I when I grew up in my household we spoke more English mm -hmm. than Igbo so you know, we used to, my parents lived abroad a little bit in the U.S. before coming back home to Nigeria. Mm -hmm. So um, we were, you know, kind of known as the Americanas, right? So there was mm -hmm. people come around our home and there's this thing about speaking English. So I don't think it was intentional. Thankfully, I was able to learn the language. But what happened to me and how I discovered this awesome, wonderful Ifunanya was that I, I, I just became embarrassed. My kids started to tell me like, mom, why didn't you teach us the language? You know, uh, why this, why that? And I felt really bad. And I said, you know what? I'm, you're right. I was wrong, you know? And I should have made a more of an effort. And, I, and now I feel like you guys are getting older. They're young adults now. And I, I feel terrible. <laughs> and I know there are lots of parents out there that feel the same way. So I called my mom. I'm like, I remember you told me that you have this niece or goddaughter that wanted to learn Igbo and she did. And within a few years, she was conversational and even writing. And I was like, what's her info? Can you tell me who the person that taught her was? And I bothered my mom, like I was really pressed. And then I reached out. She gave me your, your number and I reached out to you and I found out your story, which is that you didn't grow up speaking Igbo. So tell me and tell the audience what, what happened. How did it get there? <laughs> Sure. So um, I think like a lot of us in the diaspora, which is um, kind of the unfortunate part, but then also like I'm very much so for um, looking at things through a different lens um, at this point in our lives. But a lot of us grow up with two parents who are Igbo speaking and they speak it with each other, but then somehow they turn to us and speak English. And so it becomes this thing where we hear it it's amongst our parents, but then the expectation is not for us to like speak it or know it that's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. and so that that was very much so my experience but I've always since I was younger had such a love for the language and culture and I think a lot of us in the diaspora were still very much so de defined by like our Igbo culture mm -hmm. um that since I was a kid I would like try to learn the language or I would ask questions about like oh you know what are my parents saying and then of course every now and then they do tell you like you know Mitchell's or you know mm -hmm. Mayoku, like you know give when you're angry message. it'll send you on a message right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. yeah. you would figure that out you're like oh I know what that means <laughs> exactly. so how did you now like uh like now delve into the actual language like what happened what was the trigger yeah, so I I just, I feel like um throughout my life I kind of grew up as we would say hearing it so having an um a comprehension of it um but at a certain point I realized that I couldn't actually articulate myself in it at all like I couldn't string words together despite 
you know, feeling like I could actually hear a good amount. Mm -hmm. And um, I ended up like, I started conversing like with one of my peers in the US and like trying to ask him to teach me how to speak Igbo, but you know, it was fun, but it wasn't like, it wasn't as intentional as maybe like I needed, but I do think it gave me direction on what I would need to learn. So fast forward to um, basically a few months before starting graduate school, I quit my full-time job and I decided to like kind of relocate to Nigeria with the primary goal of learning to speak Igbo and like just becoming more immersed in my culture, just because I felt like hopefully I'm not working the rest of my lives, but that my rest of my life, but that work would always be there. So hmm. instead of spending that time between graduate school, just working, I said, let me take a moment and not just work on like what I wanted to be as like, you know, a physical therapist or as this or that profession, but who I wanted to be and who I wanted to be as somebody who is, you know, has confidence in their culture, feels oh. like they can embrace it and has the tools, including language to do so. Mm -hmm. Um, so I basically I ended up staying in Nigeria for about six months and uh -huh. that was like very transformational for my learning of the language uh -huh. and there that was six the months. wow mm -hmm. what were you in the east or were you in Lagos what was your geographical location I was primarily in the east so I was primarily based in Oweri um, mm -hmm. but I did move about to I traveled to several um, eastern states and then like a few places like Lagos, Abuja. I even went to like Benue, mm. um, but I was primarily in Oweri. Hmm. Nice. And what? How was? How did you? How did you learn it? Like I'm just curious. What happened? How did you start yeah. speaking it? What yeah. Is it? So I had actually realized that. Um, I had to kind of teach the speakers around me how to teach me. Mm. Um, so I didn't actually have a class or anything that I sat in on. Um, but basically, I first of all, I kind of knew these are the people who, when they see me, they're just probably going to go straight to English just because. Right away. Like, <laughs> if, Americana! They start exactly, speaking English to you. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And then there's others that's going to be like, nah, but like, like they yeah. don't care at all like they just know that going <laughs> love it love it so, so I definitely tried to hang out more with people who know send who's just they like don't send yeah. anybody they just want to know what did they go like, what did that? <laughs> whether you understand you don't understand I'm speaking my own so I love it <laughs> so I, I first it. had to kind of be selective who I surrounded myself with and then I used to like um on my phone I would record them like saying certain things and like listen to it and practice myself saying it. And then I looked up different patterns um, mm. of saying something. So like I noticed, oh, every time someone says more when ya we ya, how mm -hmm. we ya, like you were figuring yeah. out what they were trying to say. Yeah, and just listening for different like language patterns, like even like I remember one time I wrote out like I am hungry, I go na gom. How do you say he's mm. hungry? I go na go ya. How do you say they are hungry? I go na go ha. So like looking at those different patterns. Yeah. And so um it kind of just really helped as me use the different patterns that I was like practicing, that I was noticing and using it in application with people. And so I would speak really slowly, speak with my Americana accent, but I was communicating and like from there, I just kept improving. Nice. So it, I guess what I can get from you is that there was an intentionality in the fact that mm -hmm. I want to learn this language and you moved yourself, you sacrificed. You're pro you, you were doing a very intensive program and you sacrificed that you had work and you were like, I'm going to go home for six months and I'm going to do this. And you were successful. You came back speaking it. Like, how did you go from speaking it to now teaching it? Yeah. So, and just one thing to clarify, I didn't, when I left on this venture, I didn't know how long I would stay. I didn't know. It wasn't like, planned. 
it wasn't fully thought through. It was just more so take the leap and then figure it out along the way. Like I had people who were encouraging me to do it and people who were discouraging me. So I didn't really know. <laughs> of course. Um, but I'm, I'm really, really grateful that I ended up being able to stay for six months and just like um, you called it a sacrifice, but it ended up being like one of the best decisions of my life in so many ways. So it wasn't like it was an incredibly rewarding experience. Well, listen, we're in America, right? So when you're in America, a lot of times you're dealing with bills. You're dealing with, and I don't know what's going on with my dog. So I apologize for the background noise. You know, normally he's quiet, but you know, I don't know what's happening. So, but you made a very focused decision to go and you have there's so many things that are here to deal with to pull yourself away Definitely. from from all of that is not easy it wasn't. And, and i'm sure you were not working and making dollars when you were back home no exactly so you were you know managing on savings and whatever mm -hmm. you know it wasn't easy yeah so, i had to save up for this experience for sure yeah so but i but i'm glad that you did because I've, I've checked out your program. She has a fantastic podcast called Oji Abiala Ibo Podcast. Mm -hmm. And I guess Oji means uh, Kula Not, and which is also uh, a way of saying uh, refreshments. You know, when people come to visit you, you know, we give them Oji, right? Mm -hmm. So um, this was, uh, I mean, podcast, the website, I'm just impressed and amazed and a young lady such as yourself doing this. And how often do you have these um, cohorts? Because you have groups of people online, right? Are they only in the U.S.? Where are your students from? Yes. Yeah, so um, I digress because you actually asked me the question of how did I go from like learning to teaching? To speaking, I'm sorry. Um, yes, you did start to say it and I just kind of sidetracked. Go ahead and answer that first. And then you answer the next one. I'm so excited. Um, <laughs> I'm saying. Um, but basically, long story short, I started the podcast after I saw myself become more conversational and equal. I wanted other people like me to be able to also tap into be actually becoming conversational. So I started the podcast um, that's free. It's on like all streaming um, platforms, mm -hmm. so platforms like um, Spotify, Google, Apple, like it's free. You just listen to it. And I wanted to find something that people could do that could fit into like their busy lives. Like, you know, when you're driving to work, when you're at the gym, when you're cooking, cleaning, mm -hmm. just because I know one big hurdle to language learning is like finding the time. Um, I do a lot of listening to podcasts, especially mm -hmm. when I'm cleaning or audiobooks. Yeah. So it just kind of, it's just, you know, it's, it just, it, it seems natural. Cause you're not really, it's not like you're sitting down taking so pen. Actively, yeah. So I started the podcast for that. And then from there, I had the program in mind to start, but um, I wanted to, I just knew I, knew I just needed to take a step. So I took my first step with the podcast. Mm -hmm. About a year into that, um, I worked on a program and basically the program um, trains and employs people back home in Nigeria who are like native speakers, some of which you've studied the Igbo language, like they're, you know, linguists that from UNN and others who are just native speakers who are, you know, very knowledgeable about the language. Mm -hmm. And I basically put them through a particular training um, that one helps them to know how to work with, you know, different people in the diaspora, as well as two, give them some insight into the mind of an adult Igbo language learner so oh. like certain things that I feel like I struggled with or that was really difficult for me to kind of grasp as um an Igbo learner learner yeah helping them to help their students through that as well as like you know making the curriculum making the lessons those types of things with their assistance oh. so I created this um program and I employ um tutors back home in Nigeria and they facilitate the both individual lessons that we yeah. offer and also group lessons that we offer I love it. I love it. And this is a segue question, but as a parent, I have to ask, how did your parents feel? Um, I think they how, feel how did they feel and how do they feel? Like, yeah. what does it, you know, mean to them that their daughter is speaking their native language and now teaching other people? 
I think they're happy and I think they're proud. And I think there's there's a feeling that doesn't fully, that you can't fully put to words. Like um, there's this quote, it's like, if you speak to a man with his, um, if you speak to them in a foreign language, you know, they hear you. But if you speak to them through their own like language, they feel you like you're speaking I to their heart. I love it. And I, love um, it. I feel that in many ways, like when I communicate with my dad and like Igbo, when I can really drive a point home now because I can like switch to like the Igbo language to make it. I um, love it. And I know there's been even instances like, you know, something more painful, like, you know, maybe talking about someone passing or reminiscing about his childhood and being able to switch and tell me those stories or things in Igbo, I can see the different man he even becomes being able to you know share that with me in his native language so it's been really really amazing um I, love it. I absolutely love it I love it and then the other uh, I think that one of the questions I asked was how um like where are your students from where are they like where do you yeah we've been incredibly blessed our students are all over the world um majority uh U.S. and U.K. Um, but we've had students in Australia, we have students in Ireland, Germany, oh. um, Canada. Um, oh. So we've been really best in it. And also just speaks towards, we know Igbo men always go, moving around looking for opportunity. They're like, we have a <laughs> Tell me about it. We're everywhere. <laughs> We're everywhere. And so <laughs> are, you know, others like me looking to connect. So we've even had, um, you know, learners in Sweden. So <laughs> it's been pretty cool. I love it. I absolutely love it. And then I have another question. What sets you apart from other programs and what testimonies do you have to share? Sure. Um, I think, or I know what set, uh, sets us apart from other programs is number one. Um, I think the fact that I am also an Igbo learner is a strength more than it is a weakness because of the fact that like, um, when I'm creating these things, it's from a very deep yearning that I know I share with the people that I'm creating it with. So even when I'm training the tutors, like there's no nonsense, there's no game. Like I'm very, you know, very intentional about making sure that they make sure it's an encouraging environment. It's a welcoming environment. It's an empowering environment because I know what this journey means for other people like me who are embarking on it. Like to feel like, you know, you're evil for sure. And everything about you feels evil, but then not ha having access to the language, not having access to like, you know, what's happening around you in that way. Like it's, it's kind of personal. So I, um, it's very important that the environment that we create is very empowering. It's very encouraging. And it's very intentional about how we teach. Also having the lessons be formulated um, from a learner's perspective and an adult learner at that, I think that's really nice too, because it thinks about how you learn at this particular time in your life, as well as, you know, I probably just did eight hours of work. <laughs> like, maybe let's not make this like, you know, this type of mm -hmm, thing, but mm -hmm, let's make it in a way that, oh, this is actually waking me up and I feel yeah. good about doing yeah, it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, wow. I think that's a, a big part of what's yeah. like. I think when I spoke to my um, older son, who's a senior in college, and I said, you know, speak to this lady. I think for him, what I feel connected him to you was the fact that you were like him. You grew up here. Your parents are like me. They just didn't speak it to us. So to them, right? So he could, you know, and it was like, okay, that's pretty cool. Because I really wanted you know, it's hard to sometimes, I mean, I'm already, I'm, I feel terrible, like I, like I said to you, that I didn't teach them, right? I didn't speak it to them. So in a way, I'm trying to make up for lost time. And I know that I don't have the tools. And that's why I found you, right? And I feel like there's so many people like myself who need this help and are willing to pay, you know, a few dollars to assist them in, you know, making up for lost time and mm -hmm. so that they can be able to speak Igbo with their kids. You know, you're in the supermarket. I can't tell you how many times when I was 
when we they were younger and we'd be in the supermarket and they'd be misbehave, a side eye wasn't enough. Sometimes you want to say, happy for me, Milgari, my something, <laughs> you know, <laughs> something that will like impactfully, you know, they'll feel it. Yeah. But I'll do the side eye, maybe a small little pinch, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because I wanted them to behave. Yeah. But I figured that if I could speak in my language like other people, like Chinese or Latino, speak mm -hmm. to their kids yeah. they they behave right away you know no need for you know like you're um, maybe 100 yards away and i'm trying to you know give no i'll yeah. say something and nobody else in the room understands but you and me yeah, I, yeah. yeah so i wish that i had been able to do that but that notwithstanding i'm making up for lost time and a lot of you that are home um that are watching this wherever you are uh need to tap into this make up for lost time, make yourself feel a little bit better. Don't feel guilty like me, right? And and learn the language through a system that works. For example, um, how long does it take for your students to be conversational? And do you have follow-up studies and materials for the students to use to keep their Igbo uh, fresh? Yeah, so... Um even in terms of the idea of like what stands us apart, part of what stands us apart is that we are, it's also incredibly affordable, but also the formatting is, is quite different. So we recognize that language learning is a journey. So it's not just this one quick fix of this and you're going to learn Igbo. We actually have people come to us who are either complete beginners to people who actually can speak Igbo quite well, but they just want to be able to have somebody that they can keep their Igbo up with and converse with. So our program is structured in a way that it can be ongoing because even when you think about your English, like your five-year-old English, you're speaking English, but it's not the same thing as- Oh, no, you develop, I mean, you know, your vocabulary and all that, yeah. Right, your, you know, being able to speak in proverbial ways or, you know, it just, there's different levels to it. Mm -hmm. so even with the idea of being how quick somebody can be convert, um, you know, start speaking, it honestly, it depends. Like if you come with, you know, no ability to hear Igbo, to understand Igbo, then it is gonna be more of a journey depending on what you're willing to put into it, both in and outside of class. Mm -hmm. um, if you come with ability to hear and, you know, just speaking it is harder, you likely are gonna, your half of the battle is fought already. So I would say our program promotes speaking from day one. So from very, very day one, you're taught things that can help you interact, even if it's just, you know, meet that auntie and she's just asking like, ke du, ke kwanu, yeah. ke kwa, ula mm -hmm. like, you learn the Igbo that mm -hmm. you can use and mm -hmm. that influence. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> just simple conversational exactly. pieces, and then you know, before you start going into like deeper conversations, exactly. Yeah. So, from Answering day one, we start pieces. teaching that. I um, love, I love it. it. It also just depends on we always say that, like, you know, we're gonna put in our best too. So, we um want the learners to make this the best experience for them because mm -hmm. we're already here putting in our best, you know. Absolutely, yeah. I guess the other question I have is. Um, in between the classes, do they have like um, homework, study material, things that they they do, or you know, like how do they keep it up while in between classes? Sure. So um, we offer individual lessons, and the way the individual lessons work is that um, there's a session a week, like a live session a week, and then in between that there are voice notes, exchanges, and writing and texting and stuff. Just so that even if you're not just sitting on the phone with somebody or Zoom with somebody, you're sending like an audio, practicing, saying something, practicing, formulating your yes. um, sentences and things like that. So that's kind of the structure of the individual classes. And we also with individuals, some people look for like, um, you know, lesson classes and then like a 30 minute additional thing to add where they're just practicing speaking. So they're not even like going through a lesson, but like, let's just speak. So we have just different offerings and ways that we can tailor the individual class. And then we also have group lessons where we take like different cohorts and the group lessons are typically 10 week um, periods of time. In those 10 weeks, there's um, a live class um, once a week for two hours. And then during the week, it's the same type of assignment 
and things that are sent out for like voice note exchange to practice what you learn throughout the week. Mm. So we try to help people make the habit of learning the language. If it's just, let me listen to this audio really quick. Let me, you know, read what was written. Let me listen to the podcast. Mm. Um, let me review the PowerPoints or stuff like that. And we're also working on like more material, like a workbook, um, children's books, just different things that can help make like, I love language learning part I of love people's day. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And then um, how much does it cost? And I know you said the um, cohorts, it's, it's a 10 week course, mm -hmm. but typically how long do you see that most of your students are like speaking it a little bit better than just few words here and there but the cost and then the length of time before they become like conversational yes um so the cost for the individual lessons we have two tier the standard program currently um we're in the process of transitioning to our own app which is through our like sister brand called ubudo um mm. and so the price will change when we fully transitioned, but currently the price for individual lessons are $55 a month for um, the standard program. And for the premium program, it's $95 a month. And that's individual what's, lessons. What's the difference between standard and premium? The One of the biggest difference is time. So the standard program, each live session is between 45 minutes to an hour, while the standard is um, an hour and a half. Okay. Um, and then there's also like a difference in some of the medium. So uh, the premium program is a bit more classroomy where you have like a PowerPoint that you're looking at and a live board and all that that you're writing on, whereas the standard is a lot more conversational. Even if you're a beginner, it's kind of it breaks it down less textbooky. Um, so for some people who need kind of need to go through like a more rigid basis, um, they really like the premium program but also some people who just want more time a week. Sometimes they do the premium program, but they're like, uh, you know, let's do a little less of the PowerPoints and more of the uh, other dialogues and other activities that we arrange. So again, we try to be flexible enough to tailor it for individuals based on our offerings. And that's, the, that's for the individual. Then the group one is? Yeah, so the group one is a 10 week course and it's, um, $15 a week, so $150 for 10 weeks. And at, by the end of that, people definitely like, we drill it in for people to be able to introduce themselves in Emo and go through like a basic interaction of like greetings and things like that. So definitely by the end of that course, people um, feel quite um, confident in saying their name, where they're from, um, asking you how you're doing, replying how they're doing, saying, you know, what they're doing. And then just depending on the effort that they put into it, as well as where they start, we also go into, um, during that course, making deeper sentences like past tense, present, future, um, also what we call thinking in Igbo type of phrases. Mm -hmm. So, so let's kind of go through a little practice, if you will, yeah. like uh, the things that you would uh, say, maybe how somebody would go from they, they they weren't speaking it at all and now they know how to say their name and how to you know can you kind of give us like a guided like a quick few things that you would say mean this in english but say it's it's it's, it's said like this in Igbo, just to kind of so that they train their ears because some parents will be listening and you never know maybe a young adult is listening and he's like i've always wanted to learn this my parents didn't teach me don't blame them you know, I'm one of those parents, you know, and I'm sorry, <laughs> but Ifunanya is here now to, to help, you know, with her program. So give us like a little, you know, English, what is that, what it means in English and what it means in the few things that people are learning when they leave your course and then say it in Igbo. Sure. So, um, I guess I'll start by introducing myself and then I'll do some thinking in Igbo phrases. Okay. So, um, local government, Imo states. Mm -hmm. so my name is Ifnaya. I am um, from Eboma in Uguta local government, Imo states. Manakita, Ebina, New Jersey. So now I live in New Jersey. Um, 
I go to um, physiotherapy. So I read or I studied physical therapy. Uh-huh. And so some survival phrase, I am webu, like biko, yaramaka, or biko, where am I to Ago nagogi, are you hungry? Ago uh-huh. nagom, or ewe mike, like in Igbo. That if you translate that directly, that means I have power, I have strength. But in, mm-hmm. in English, it's really I can. So, mm-hmm. I can help you. Yes, um, that is funny because, mm-hmm. you know, it sounds like it's a lot more complex when you say it in Igbo, but then when you translate it, it's very simple. So, mm-hmm. a lot of words don't translate the way <laughs> they really are meant to. Exactly. You know, I have the strength to help you, really, is what <laughs> I can. Yeah. You know, what I can means, right? Yeah. I can. I have the strength. You know, yeah. it has a, it has a stronger meaning when you say it in Igbo. Definitely. You know? Yeah. And I can help you. It doesn't even carry the same. It's loaded when you say that because you're like, you're saying it from a place of, I really want to help you and I have the strength to. And it's within my power to. Yeah. Yes. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just realized that it, as you said that it like it really doesn't translate. I mean, yeah. I've always known that, but it just kind of hit. And I think that like that. that's one of the beautiful parts, even with the um, tutors who work with us. Like, obviously, they're native speakers. They speak very well. They teach very well. But when you start looking at the language through a different lens, this language that you grew up with now takes on a different form. Like, Absolutely. you're like, oh, wow, I've always just been saying this thing. But mm-hmm. you know, we never really <laughs> thought about it. The yeah. way, you know, what dissecting it, might have, yeah. I might even, who, who knows, I might even join a more complex class to brush up on my... <laughs> yeah, I know. I think, and I think you have a great time. And sometimes there, there have been people who join and literally it's like they're just partner. Like you, they talk about stuff that's happening around the world in Nigeria and it just feels good having that like 45 minute hour to just kind of go ham and Igbo because throughout the rest of their lives is English, English, English. So yes. You're I'm- working, you're speaking English, you're <laughs> in school, you're speaking English, everything, you know, basically. And so your native language isn't practiced as much as yeah. you want to. And so you're yeah, you're English. welcome. And I, your first month is on me. I'd love Yay! to. Yay, <laughs> I'm excited. Well, you've heard it, folks. Uh, Ifunanya has given us a fantastic uh, information about her program her wonderful story about how she got started, how she even wanted to learn. I'm even sure when you were going to learn it, you didn't even think this far. You just wanted to speak it. Yeah. And then all of a sudden you realize there's, you know, I think, what do they always say about um, an opportunity? Like you you took an opportunity to learn something, but there was actually um, a situation that needed a solution, right? Yeah. A lot of people exactly. are going through what you are going through. And exactly. if, if parents can actually learn from me and other parents, start early if you can. Agreed. Agreed. If, if you can start, the, if most of these kids are savvy online now. They are, they've been, if, the, if anything, the pandemic has taught us, right? You can Zoom. So get those kids on Zoom from the time they start speaking because they're playing with their laptops. I mean, my little nephew, he's on his phone. He's... The good thing, my sister is teaching him Igbo. So oh he knows the body parts. He knows, I mean, I when I speak to him, sometimes I speak in Igbo. So I'm happy. I'm oh like, my oh my God, he doesn't have to, she doesn't have to deal with my guilt. <laughs> and the kind of guilt that I have for what I didn't do for my kids. And I can actually speak Igbo to him. He's three. Yeah. yeah. I love it. So, Wonderful. you know, if you can start these kids at two or three, they know how to work the computer. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And you won't have to get to this age where you have, you know, what do you mean? By the time these kids are in their 20s, they're speaking fluently. And then when you go to the grocery store and they mess up, <laughs> some evil stuff. <laughs> 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 you tell them something that will make them behave. And at least, you know, it's cool. Yeah. So if and- Unanya has told us, you know, everything about how she started, um, she went to Nigeria, stayed in Oweri specifically for six months, was hanging around the people that spoke it. Then, you know, with her, or maybe her studies, the way she, she, her brain is wired, she came back to the States and then started to put together this program, which is amazing, which my kids, 
are going to be uh, taken. Um, one of my sons started the program last year, but we had some issues with the scheduling. So he's starting again in this uh, upcoming cohort, which the next uh, cohort that you're planning is starting what, February? Yeah, February 10th and 11th. Yes, so uh, is that a Friday and a Saturday? Or is that yes, a Saturday? Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Saturday and Sunday, so um, of 2023. Yeah. So if you're seeing this afterwards, I'm going to have all her um, website, podcast, mm -hmm. you know, contact information so that you can actually reach out to her, you know, and she can tell you the next one. If you're not able to join this February, she has some every few weeks she has tons of uh tutors yes we do we have she's lots of ready. opportunities just message Love us it. and we'll get something going for you the best time to start is now Definitely. so do you have something else that you want to you know like parting words something that you want to share with you know like that would just make somebody you know decide like i'm done with this i can't teach them i've tried it's too late you know, it's never too late to be honest. I mean, yeah. you did this in your in your in your twenties, right? You learned yeah. this twenties, so it's never too late if you're really, really serious. Yeah. So share with us what what you your yeah. final words for us. <laughs> well, just thank you for having me. Thank you for making the time, and um, thank you for being an illustration that is not too late. Like as long as there's a will, there's interest. You will like interest connected us. So yes. Um, as long as there's a will, you will find a way to kind of produce what you want. Yes. Um, and I think the biggest thing too is that we need to remember language learning is very, um, it's very much so part of life. Like it's very much a lifestyle thing. So it's not just like my kids study this and then, you know, pass the test and that's it. It's a thing where when they are taking, it's continuous and when they're taking the class, it's a whole family experience. So like once your child starts learning how to say like, mom, you make um, whatever. Like, I love engage in them with them. Yes. With that, or even I want to be like, able to do that. I yearn to be able to do that. I want to yeah. make up for lost time. So right. for me, it's, this is like my own way of catching up mm -hmm. and eliminating my guilt <laughs> about what I couldn't it's, do. I, I just say, look at it from the lens of something positive. Like it's a new family adventure. Like they yes. have this tutor that's dedicated to, you know, giving them the blueprint, but then they have you to experience it with. They have you to practice it with. They have you to like bring it more and more to life. So exactly. I it's love never it. too late. <laughs> Thank you so much. You are such an inspiration. Thank you. Honestly, I mean, this is a passion for you. Thank you are just a young, bright, brilliant, beautiful, Igbo babe. And I love it. Thank you so much, Ifunanya. You don't know what this means to me and what this will mean to the other people that are, are watching. And I just, maybe you just popped up on their screens and this is exactly what they needed for either themselves or for their children. And young or old, it doesn't matter. You know, okay. it's never Thank you so late. much for having me. I really appreciate the time you've taken for this. All right. Thank you so much. Have a nice one. And Dalo, Dalo, so. Chuku Gaziegi. Oh, Maginwa. Chisike. Oh. Bye bye. Nachifo or Kobo. That's the most Igbo I've spoken in a few days. So. <laughs> bye, dear. Take care. All right.